Hi, today I'm going to be talking about the Tresena of Acabal and uh, it's a bit different to normal in that I'm competing with uh, the election propaganda from San Marcos today so that's all uh, interesting and uh, I also wanted to introduce another difference in that I actually wanted to um, mention something different which I'm going to be doing the next time that Juan Acabal comes around. Juan Acabal is kind of important to me. Um, you know, I, I began my, my blog, I began writing about the Nawals, I, I launched my website on Juan Acabal, the new concept, a new concept for me to bring in. And each time that Juan Acabal comes around, I kind of like to introduce something new to you. Something new that I do, something new that I'm doing, something new that I would like to do. And this Juan Acabal, I would like to introduce a new concept which is something which I've been working on for some time, which is a retreat. And this retreat will be happening the next time when Akabao comes around. It will be starting on the 26th of February 2020. And it's going to be called the Hunakpu Retreat, the One Hero Retreat. It's going to be 13 days of Mayan temples, of trekking, of journey work and ceremony. And so if that sounds like the sort of thing that you might be interested for February next year, coming down to Guatemala and getting a little bit of sunshine when it's uh, maybe cold and wet where you are, then please watch my page. Uh, in the next uh, 20 days or so, I'll be launching it properly and uh, we'll see where that goes. So anyhow, without further ado, the Tresena of Acabal. So it's all about bringing new concepts in. It's about the new day, the new sunrise, the new dawn. It's about a time of change. It's often about bringing something into the light from the darkness. So in this way, it can be about bringing your dreams into this world. You might have been dreaming on something for a while, waiting for the right time to set the process in motion to start this concept, to bring this concept into this world, now's the time to do it. One Akhabal would suggest that this is very um, much a, a small new concept because you've got the one, the new birth. So this is just the seed of an idea. This is just the first glint that there's a new day coming. The sky just beginning to change color. You can just about see that it's not night anymore and that the day is coming. So. This is the way that we can work in this time. This is what we're going to bring in. It's all about looking at those new projects. Maybe it's just a concept that you have right now, but it's time to start sketching it out. It's time to start getting it out into the world and saying, you know, I had this dream and I was thinking we could do it like this and we could do it like that. It's starting to bring it together. And on the day one Akabal, it may be a time to start expressing those new concepts to your friends, to your family, to your colleagues, whoever it is that you want to get that concept out to. And to, to have a look around and see what can help you, who might help you. Because that one is like that seed which is going to grow. And as that seed is sitting there, it's going to need some fertilizer, it's going to need some water, it's going to need some, some compost. And maybe your friends, maybe your family are exactly that. So if you've got something that you're trying to translate from the dream into the real world, this is exactly the time to do it. And Juan Acabal gives us that opportunity to work with our colleagues, our partners, our friends, in order to develop that concept into something which can really take root and fulfill its potential. We go from Juan Acabal into to Cat. So we have Cat the net with which gathers the abundance. Now, okay, we're in the Akabaltra Center, and so how are we looking at that? Well, two cat might be looking at what you want to include into your concept and what you want to exclude from it. What attachments you can let go of in order to bring that new concept into the world. Um, two cat can also be very much two representing the lovers, representing relationships, and cat representing attachments. So maybe there's kind of like some detachment that could be made, or maybe it's a great day to like help um, use the, the the skills of your of your partner, engage with them to understand how you can gather that abundance how you can bring that project together, that, that, that idea, that concept together. 
This is about working in partnership in order to create abundance. So it's a great day maybe to brainstorm with your partner about how you might be able to do things, how you might be able to bring something new into the world. From to cat, we're then going to go into three can. So we have can, the Nawal of power and wisdom, and three, the number of the home and the inner work. So again, like as I was saying, we might be searching for some help to bring our new concept into the world, but with three can, this might suggest we've got to look to our own wisdom, look to the wisdom within each one of us to find out how we can develop our project from there, how we can develop this concept. So it might be a great day for meditation, meditation on what you've learned in the path, what you've learned that brings you wisdom, where your inner wisdom is. This is a way of looking at it. From three can, we're going to go into four came. So four came, came, well, this might suggest ancestors. So once again, in order to bring your concept into the world, maybe dialogue with your ancestors may help to bring physical stability to this concept that you're bringing in. The other option here for four came is about facing physical fears. Because Kame is all about that. It's about the transformation that happens to us when we face our fears, when we get on with things. And sometimes to bring those new concepts in, we're going to have to overcome some, like, some physical fears. Something that we thought might happen or something that we kind of like, you know, those things that are stopping us. Well, 4 Kame gives us the opportunity to overcome those physical fears so that we can bring those ideas, so we can bring that new concept into the world. From 4 Kame, we're going to go into 5 Kech. So, if there ever was a day of hard work, I think 5 Kech would be it. 5 Kech is about working on the spiritual leader within you. That's one way of looking at it. It's also about working in nature which might be a nice thing to do if you have the time or opportunity. But five kech is really about putting a lot of energy, putting strength into your work, looking for the signs in nature, which kech would suggest, in order to guide your work, your work being bringing this new concept in. So it might be an idea, if you got stuck, if you're wondering where to go, if you're wondering what else you might need in order to bring that concept in, go take a walk in the forest, in the woods, in the mountains, in the park, if that's what you've got. Go and engage with nature and see what that can do to bring your work forward. From five kech, we're then going to go into six anil. Now, this is where it all starts coming together, right? Six Ganil. Ganil being the ripener, the one that brings things to their yellowness, the one that brings things to their full potential, to their goldenness. And so the number six, the material plane, with the inspiration from the heart of the sky and the heart of the earth coming into it. So it's kind of like divinely inspired ideas coming into the material plane. And Kanil, how to ripen it. I mean, we've been doing all the work. We've gone to our inner wisdom. We've faced our fears. We've put our work into it. We've got some ideas from the natural world. And here we are, coming in to Kanil, the great ripener, with the number of ultimate stability. So it would suggest that six Kanil, this is the day when we're kind of like, we're really able to look at what we've got with the, the project, with the, uh, the new concept and understand how to bring it to a full, abundant, and stable ripeness. From six Ganil, we're then going into seven Toch. So seven, the top of the pyramid, seven, the endings, final. And Toch, payment, payment, offering, sacrifice, it's all the same, it's all about giving back. Final payment on your new concept, okay? So this is where we make an offering. This is where we maybe tie up any loose ends. This is where we're able to put something maybe into the bank, as it were, to help to see our project through, to help to see this new concept in. The final payment suggests that this is a day to finalize any outstanding debts, anything that you've got 
ongoing, anything that might hold your concept up from being manifested into the physical. This is the day to really look through the ledger book, as it were, whether it's physical, energetic, karmic, whatever it might be, and make that final payment in order to go forward. You've just been blessed with six kanil, seven toch gives you a little, little opportunity to put some money in the piggy bank to help to project your concept forward. From seven toch, we're then going to go into eight z. So, with each new concept, with each new project, we need a little bit of faith in ourselves. We need a little bit of loyalty to what we're doing. And perhaps we need to adhere to some laws some ideas, concepts which make the world go around, you know, keep everything in balance. And of course we need to be doing all of this under the umbrella of unconditional love. And 8Z celebrates all of those things. It's almost like a blessing that comes to us. Now you remember how I see the 8s as the joining between the 1 of the birth and the 7 of death. It's like the old and the new coming together. 7Z was the day before Washakib Bats. It was the day where the old guide had taken us to the top of the mountain, ready for the initiation process on eight bats. One Z, the new faith, the new loyalty, the new ideas that are coming in, that we have our faith in. Well, eight Z is the joining of them together. It's looking to old faith and old loyalty in order to inspire new loyalty and new faith. Okay, so it may be an idea to get some perspective from an older guide, to bring the older guides and the new guides together in order to take your concept forward, in order to take your project forward. It's a celebration day. On 8Z we'll be making the ceremony to give thanks for our faith, to give thanks for our unconditional love and to give thanks for our guidance. All of those things come together on 8Z. After 8Z, We'll then be going into nine bats. Now, nine bats is a really special day in the calendar. It's a celebration of the women that carry the bundle, the Akikab or Ishkab, as the case might be, because they're women. So it's a celebration day for the female spiritual guides within the Mayan communities. And what we can also see here, bats is about weaving, and nine is about life. So this is weaving of life. This is, when we look at things, we look at things as if they're on a loom. Akabal is the warp of the loom, the vertical threads. Bats comes along and weaves. It brings things together. And so this is about weaving things together in life. So perhaps in this context of our new concept, our new idea that we're bringing in, Bats is here to help us to weave it together. It may be a great idea on, on nine bats to be speaking with women about how you might be able to weave this idea because like Akabal as a new concept Akabal we can see as these strands the vertical strands and if we took the loom away the vertical strands would disappear into nothingness it's bats that comes along and brings these strands together the shuttle which moves backwards and forwards the weft of the loom and so as it moves backwards and forwards, it creates something which is solid, which is tangible. So in this way, we might consider that the women in our lives might be able to help us to turn that concept into something tangible. So nine bats might be a great day to go and visit somebody that you think might be able to help with that. From nine bats, we're going to go into 10 eh. So eh, the journey, and 10, the community, cooperation, help us along the road. As we go through life, we could call it the journey of life, it might be our life path, it might be a path that we walk, it might be a physical path, it might be a physical journey. But sometimes we have to ask for assistance. And 10 is the, both the giving and receiving of assistance on the path. It's about joining hands on our path, helping other people along their path. So there's an element of guidance, there's an element of taking our concept forward. Once again, that whole, um, that whole thing with the, the Akhabal Trasena. But it's a good day not to be shy to ask for advice, to ask for a bit of help to move along. From 10 eh, 
we're going to go into 11 ach. So 11 ach, ach, the backbone. Ach, the one that supports the community. Ach, the one that supports the household. And here with the number 11. Now, this is kind of a weird one in a way, because ach is usually pretty steady. It's that staff of office. It's the one that holds everything in its rightful place. And it's the one that brings harmony. And then the 11, well, the 11 is kind of like a bit all over the place. The 11 is kind of going in many directions, looking for something. Okay, so it may result in a day where you kind of like go into many ideas or many directions in order to find harmony within your home, in order to find harmony within your community. And sometimes, you know, ach represents our spinal column. And when we're standing up straight, when we're making decisions, when sometimes we're going to have to be brave with the decisions that we make. Ach brings us the bravery. And the 11 suggests that we might have to go looking in some places that we weren't expecting to go find that. Because whenever we're bringing a new concept in, there's a certain degree of bravery that comes with it. We're going to take on something new. We're going to produce something new into the world. Will it be accepted? Will it fall? Will it fly? We don't know yet. But if we haven't got the bravery to try, then we'll never know. So with 11 Ach, we're going to be going and finding that bravery, sometimes in places we weren't expecting it. Okay, from 11 Ach, we're then going to go into 12 Ish. So Ish representing the sacred spaces, representing the connection with Mother Earth, representing our connection to the magic that is in within each one of us. And here we see it with the number 12. So the number 12 represents the bundling together of all of life's experiences. So it's taking your life experience and bringing it into one bundle in order to understand the magic that you carry that can take your concept forward. It's also to go and visit those special places to go and connect with Mother Earth, possibly through the ancient shrines or altars, through the ancient temples, if that's your thing. To use your experience and what you've experienced, the feelings that you've experienced at those places, at those shrines and at those altars, in order to help to bring your project forward, in order to use that magic to bring things forward. And then finally, we're going to finish up with 13 Zikin. Okay, so 13 Zikin. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing, a wonderful gift to receive. We're in this Trasena where we're bringing our new project into the world. And here we are with 13, ending up in 13 Zikin. Zikin being the vision. And the number 13 representing the spirit world of the ancestors. So we're going from this new concept into the vision of the ancestors. We're going from receiving this first little seed of a dream that we want to bring into the world and ending up with something which is almost could be seen as receiving a vision from the spirit world, okay? So it's kind of like we start off with an idea about where we want to go and we end up with being shown directly where it is that we can be going. The vision that comes from the spirit world is something to look out for. Now, I know the vision, the, the saying that, the vision that comes from the spirit world, are we all going to sort of see a burning bush or something like that? Well, probably not. But it's a great day to keep your eyes open for what you might see around you that's out of the ordinary. Where you might be getting some kind of, let's say, communication from your higher self or whoever it is you want to attribute it to, your ancestors, your guides, your higher self, whatever it is. It's a great day to keep your eyes open for visual messages, visual signs. The other thing about Tikin is that it's a prosperity day. And the way that I see Tikin is that when we can see into the future, we can see what's going to prosper, what's going to thrive for us and for our families and for our communities and for the earth. And so it's really important that we include all of those things into that. Now, 13 Zikin might suggest about a vision which comes from the spirit or from the ancestors, which is going to be of great importance for yourself and for the environment around you. 
So as I say, it's well worth being alert, keeping your eyes and ears open for whatever message might come through from Spirit on that day. So, this has been the Trasena of Akabal. I wish you great success with your new project, with your new concept. I hope that the ancestors bless you with a wonderful vision for where you can take it forward to, and I hope it brings you great prosperity. Thank you, and I'll see you again in 13 days' time. <laughs>